So if you guys looked at these documents and you tried practicing to hippie them, just want to quickly go over that to make sure we're getting the right stuff there. Um, you know, if we're going to get any questions on imperialism or World War uh, One, it's probably going to be about the reaction of the people or the role of the government. So that's why I kind of picked these four different um, documents. First two being about World War One. Uh, we've seen this one before, actually. I think it was on my quiz or my test. Uh, Kaiser Wilson, have you forgotten your sympathy with the poor Germans? Because they were not self-governed. Um, 20 million American women are not self-governed. Take the beam out of your own eye. So um, we saw a similar sign to this, I think, when we wrote an SAQ or maybe it was part of a DBQ or something like that. Um, but basically, uh, women are using the war as an opportunity to protest for suffrage. You know, um, Wilson, Woodrow Wilson, he kept going around saying like, hey, um, we got to make the world safe for democracy and the Germans don't have democracy. So that's really why we're going to war and we're helping all these other territories that they're taking over so they can have democracy. And that caused, you know, half the population, American women to go, well, hey, what about us? So that's the historical context. Intended audience, this one has a very specific one, that's Woodrow Wilson. The purpose is to raise awareness about women's suffrage. Uh, the point of view is obvious that Wilson is being hypocritical. And why is this important? Um, a lot of people, you know, associate World War I with giving women the right to vote. Uh, I think that's pretty true, despite the fact that a lot of Western states had given women the right to vote, like back in the 1800s. Um, still, I think it was World War I that kind of won over the rest of the country. So that's probably, the, that would be the importance there. Um, our second document, this is also from World War I. Uh, another case that we really didn't get to study too often, which is unfortunate because it's pretty interesting and it's pretty important. We actually, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a question on the AP exam this year. But this is from the majority opinion of Schenck versus the United States. Uh, we admit that in many places in ordinary times, the defendants in saying all that was said in the circular would have been within their constitutional rights, but the character of every act depends upon the circumstances in which it is done. The question <clears throat> in every case, whether the words are used in such circumstances are of such nature as to create a clear and present danger that will bring about the substantive evils that Congress has a right to prevent. So basically, <clears throat> this guy, Shank, was handing out pamphlets that told people to resist the draft. Um, and he was also promoting the Socialist Party, which a lot of people just associate with communism. And so he was sentenced to jail. He served, uh, I think it was like 10 years or more, for handing out pamphlets. Um, so that's the context behind this. He was an anti-war uh, supporter. The intended audience here is Schenck. You know, this is the courts basically saying, like, you're guilty. You know, you would have been in within your rights if this wasn't wartime. But since it's wartime, we need to prevent this danger. Um, the purpose is to sentence Schenck. Uh, the point of view is that he violated the Alien and Sedition Act. That's some, or not Alien and Sedition Act, the Espionage and Sedition Act. That's something else we should put in our historical context. This act was passed that said you couldn't say any anti-war, uh, anything that was anti-war, and you couldn't say anything bad about the government. And they found this guy guilty as uh, violating that. And so why is this important? Well, um, this is a violation of your First Amendment. You know, you have a right to speak out against things that the government does. That's the freedom of speech. And um, this kind of was a scary moment where freedom of speech was... Um, thrown away because of the fears of war. Next two documents have to do with imperialism, um, both of them cartoons. We have this title of the cartoon, Imperialism, with you know a hand, it says United States, and it's holding a suit of cards. Um, and he's got the king and the queen and the jack and the ace and the ten. And, um, you know, that's like a powerful deck in or a powerful hand rather in like I don't know poker or something I don't gamble I don't play cards you guys are probably cringing right now if you do but you know it's all the high cards the face cards and a 10 and they're labeled as the Caribbean the Philippines Japan Virgin Islands and Cuba all these places where America was practicing imperialism 
Um, so the context is that, that America is imperializing, they're expanding, they're putting power over different countries and territories, um, and that power is starting to be questioned by Americans. Uh, the audience, this would probably just be your average American. It's a political cartoon. That's usually who that's for. The purpose is to send a message about imperialism, <clears throat> the motives of imperialism, and the point of view would be, well, what is that message? And the key to knowing this, this message is to question why cards? Why a hand of cards? Why is that representing the countries? Well, cards you use to play a game, right? And these cards are powerful. So what is the saying about the United States? The United States is really just trying to play a game and try to become a world power. And that's all these countries and territories are to them. They're just pieces in the game. So this is an anti-imperialist cartoon. And so why is this important? Well, um, imperialism brought up a lot of questions about America's involvement around the world. Uh, soon after this, we returned to isolationism because we had the war with Spain and the Philippines and then World War One was breaking out. Um, so this is really kind of the beginnings of America going from a smaller country to a bigger empire. And uh, any sort of negative or positive connotation we could put with that, we can throw into the why it's important. And then finally, this last document, we have Teddy Roosevelt. Notice he's dressed like a cop, or at least that's what they looked like back then. He's got the, I don't know, like high-ranking hat on the helmet but he's got the badge a star badge and he's dressed in blue so <clears throat> and he's got the billy club so he's like a police officer and notice he's on the billy club he's swinging around it says new diplomacy and on his rolled piece of paper what does that say constitution arbitration annexation no, should have read that. Doesn't matter. We can still figure out the cartoon um, because on one side of the world, obviously this is probably South America, um, just from the way they're dressed. Um, we have these people, you know, arguing with these people on the other side of the world, which is probably Europe, just because of the way they're dressed. And you know, notice the British person is holding a warship, and these other guys have swords in the back here and they're wearing helmets they look like military officers or leaders these people not so much and oh it even says Europe down here and the world's constable so it's showing that Europe is trying to go to war or have some sort of influence or takeover of South America and the great constable the world's constable Teddy Roosevelt is policing that he's keeping them from fighting using this new diplomacy so historical context, uh, this is obviously during the Teddy Roosevelt era um, of imperialism. You know, he was famous for the Great White Fleet and the Roosevelt Corollary. Um, that's probably what we would put in our historical context, the Roosevelt Corollary, that addition to the Monroe Doctrine, which said, you know, South America, it's off limits. And the corollary added the or else, or else, you know, America will step in. So that's why he's, he's dressed as the police officer here. The intended audience, political cartoon, it's the American public. Um, purpose is to show that America is now like the world's police, right? It's even titled World Constable. They're going to mediate any sort of um, division or uh, conflict between the Eastern and Western world. And the point of view is that, you know, America is going to use this new diplomacy, this new power that they have through imperialism to police the world and, and to gain more power. So why is this important? Similar to the last one, um, any sort of consequence of imperialism, you know, this led to a lot of other wars and America has really never gone back to being an isolated country. Um, we've always kind of been an empire when you really think about it, but you know, this is the beginnings of that world power status that America uh, started striving for in imperialism. Uh, we might want to question, you know, the Filipino War. Remember, that was the, for the Philippines to gain independence from America after the Spanish-American War. Um, that led to a lot of, you know, conflict over whether or not we should be 
imperializing. You might bring up yellow journalism. There's a lot of different ways you can go here. But hopefully that makes some sense. And as always, guys, email me with any questions about this. And uh, don't forget about the Period 7 AMSCO review document. This is all practice, but that one I am grading. All right. Peace.